Simon's music, like Pierre Henry, like probably also mine, we all have in common something which is linked to a impressionist ap- approach to sounds and to music. What, what I mean by this is actually uh, the German electronic music is more expressionist, is more kind of sometimes apology of machine. Uh, in French electronic music, we have this kind of uh, impressionistic approach from Monet, Debussy, Ravel, which has its own uh, poetic aspect in itself. And it's what I feel when I, when I listen to uh, Point 79 and with uh, Simon's work. du morceau avec Olivia uh, and to talk about the song with Olivia it's the same it's a track where I recorded almost all the scenes at uh, Jean-Michel studio really the scene I recorded on was uh, unplayable because it was too old it was moving all the time but really it tells something the fact that it moves a little bit My name is Olivia Merilati. I'm uh, French and Finnish. Uh, I've been working on my own music for a long time now. I used to be in a band called The Doe. I released my first solo album, uh, Prudence, a couple of years ago. And now I'm working on my, I keep working on my solo stuff and making um, music for films and series and stuff like that as Olivia Merilati. When I got a request from him, I was obviously honored and also I really loved one of the tracks, which is the one I picked, which wasn't the easiest. It was the one that actually really I felt in connection with the emotion of that track. It wasn't the easiest because the building of the track was a bit complicated because it's very hypnotic and it keeps resetting sort of in pop music and songwriting, traditional songwriting, let's say, it's, I always have my landmarks and it's like four, four, two, two. <laughs> and on this one, it was very, yeah, I can't really find another word that's hypnotic. It's like a never ending spiral with this arpeggio that keeps turning and turning. Like it, it was, it was very confusing at first, but that I knew I could do something about it. <laughs> I, I wasn't, Hopeless. <laughs> I think I, I started just recording my vocals in a very spontaneous way, as I usually do, and then pick what I liked and started like properly song songwriting. But he gave me the freedom to build the track, like the structure of the track, make it easier for me to write on and make kind of a a chorus and uh, and verses so, so that it, it's easier to to work on yes she wrote the lyrics and she wrote the vocal line it's uh, really 50 50 i did the music and she did everything else the lyrics for that song were kind of a mix of uh, experience personal experience and some memories of other people's stories it's always a mix of a lot of unconscious things Someone who keeps going into extremes, that kind of, that kind of mood. <laughs> Sa voix, elle est géniale, elle est hallucinante. Her voice is really, really beautiful. She just says one word for me and the emotions come through. She has a voice that touches me a lot, that moves me. The day we did this collaboration, I was really, really happy. That's the kind of magic with music. It drives you somewhere. This was like a labyrinth, a labyrinth trying to find my way out of this incredible music that was trying to trap the melody in it. There was a really, there was a connection. There was a strange connection with it. And I think he also uh, liked the idea and valued the fact that there was some kind of a jump into the unknown with, with me working on that track. The, the emotion of that particular song is kind of, um, I try not to make it sad, obviously, which is something I 
sometimes do, which is kind of uh, something I like to do, but you know, you can't keep crying all the time. <laughs> I actually, I think I tried to make it kind of heroic in a way, like it's quite sad and, and emotional, but it's also like brave. I can feel that in the music as well. Epic is the word. <laughs> As a graphic designer, I know the power of a graphic sign. And when you want to communicate on a project, choose a color, identify someone, it's easier when you have a strong sign. And a strong sign in graphic design is a simple sign. Philippe Tidgat. I'm very, very fond of the work of an old French graphic designer called Roger Excoffon, who is one of the greatest graphic designers, one of the most famous of the 20th century, who made the Air France logo. And clearly, the French 79 logo was inspired by this kind of diagonal. This slash, broken down into three, four stripes, is not the same proportions, it's not the same colors, but as Simon's artist name was already a sort of simple introduction, like, I'm French and I was born in 1979, I thought it would work well if we just remember signs like that, signs that we all know, we don't know exactly where we've seen them, but they are recognizable. And then, on the album cover, we thought it was cool to not even write the name, but just have this sign, this sort of diagonal, oblique, with several colors on it. Simon's music gives me a lot of emotions. He often talks about adolescence. We're almost the same age. We went through the same things as children, the same things as teenagers. We have the same movies and music references. And in his sounds, I felt something that reminded me of the 80s and 90s. So I was looking for colors that remind me of that era. We made three albums with this logo. So the first one was the presentation of the logo only, which was already with a little textile texture. For the second album, we wanted to make a reference to the VHS, to the video cassettes of the time. And on the third album, we asked ourselves if we should use the logo again and realized that using it a third time in a central way would definitely lock ourselves into something. We'd never be able to get out of it again. And Simon, one day he calls me and says, listen, I have an idea. I don't know if it's good, but I think I'd call my album Teenager. It's about that time of existence, the time of the first experiences the first musical references, really a transitional period of construction. You're still a child, you're not quite an adult yet. He said to me, I imagine a child running with a French 79 flag, like a football fan, or like someone who goes to the stadium with my colors on, or someone who goes to a concert. We don't really know. The idea is to remain open. I immediately thought that this is an image that could really work well. Bertrand Jameau, who is my partner at Cowboys, with whom we make the clips, is a photograph. And so he was instantly interested in taking this picture. It's quite simple. I looked at my son and I thought, oh, it could be you. I mentioned it to Simon and he said, yes, definitely. We think it's a good match. We live in Nancy. The period when all this was happening was in the middle of winter and I said to my son, come on, let's go, let's take a flag and uh, go for a walk. And I had uh, an idea of a spot which is very exposed above Nancy, where I knew that uh, if we put ourselves a little bit low to the ground, we won't give any indication of the place. We'll just have the ground, the skyline and the sky. It was very special this morning because it was so cold. It was about minus 15 and this plateau was located above Nancy and was totally icy uh, when we went there. It was minus 15 but at the same time we didn't want him to wear a huge down jacket because he want, we want to, to, to read the structure of this body for the photo to be elegant. And I said, go red, take the jacket off and, and run. So we've tried to do that quite quickly and he did several runs with this flag. The flag was made by a friend of mine called Delphine Menou. She's a professional seamstress and upholsterer. The aim was to make people believe that a child had made it by himself. We wanted to have a homemade look and to tell the story of a kid who had fun sewing the flag himself. 
voulait raconter un peu cette histoire de gamin qui s'amuse à coup de lui-même ce, ce drapeau. Ça a même failli être un clip. Hein. Il y a une autre problématique, c'est qu'un drapeau... problème was that the flag has to fly and the folds on the flag from one second to the next, they don't fit anymore. So it was a bus shot. I was thinking that there has to be one that fits between the position of the feet, the position of the arms, the look in his eyes, the position of the flag. So it's a combination of many elements. I had to take a lot of pictures, but the good thing is that the lighting atmosphere was just perfect. The proof is that it's very, very rare that I put out the photo without retouching. And this one is a raw photo from the camera. It's almost more like a reportage photo, uh, more than a studio photo. My son caught a small cold just after this photo, which earned me some reproaches. But uh, he was so happy to be on the cover that it wasn't a big deal. I have to tell you that this is my first album cover. I'm obviously extremely happy to have a first album cover, especially for a friend of over 30 years. That's so cool. To take over from Philips covers, which were great with this logo ID, to say, okay, let's do a variation of it. So there is also something quite particular on this song. It's a bass, which is uh, which is still a moog, but which is very raw. I must admit that uh, I'm very happy with this. I've wanted to make a song like that for a long, long time. And when I managed to find this song, I didn't cry, but uh, I was close. Uh, yes, it's raw. It could be scary when you listen to it alone like that, but uh, I think it brings a kind of emotional things. Initially, the order was an album cover. Since it's a photo, let's go all the way and assume that it's a photo. That's also part of the reason why we campaigned so hard for the name of French 79, the name of the album, to appear on the cellophane and not directly on the print. So that when you take it off, you can put it in the middle of your living room and say, I'm hanging a photo. So there, uh, I allowed myself something that normally isn't done in music. Well, uh, there's nothing that isn't done, but that's exactly why this album has this teenager side, where you can do carefree things that once you're an adult, you don't do anymore, because you're not allowed to do them. Uh, there's a chorus, which is like a solo. We used to listen to rock or pop songs where there's a guitar solo at the end of the song, once you've done the verses and choruses, and then the last chorus. Here it comes almost at the beginning and I really thought of it like that as if it was a guitar solo except that it's a synthesizer solo. Après, si je te le mets, par exemple, avec la suite d'accords et la, la basse, sans la, la rythmique, ça fait ça. So when I was a teenager, it was in the 90s. We used to go to parties at the time. We used to dance some slows when we were little. Well, basically, I put this farfisa, which is uh, for me really representing the first slow dance, the first time you have a girlfriend in your arms, you know. And for me, this song here corresponds to that. Corresponds à ça, c'est ça.
c'est pareil, ce morceau-là, il est... The song is really free. For me, it invokes a lot of freedom because I put a mood chorus, a solo at the beginning of the song, then after a big bridge, then finally this little organ. In any case, it doesn't tick any of the boxes of what you've normally a lot to do to make a song that will be played on the radio or not. This one is really anti all that. So for me, it's freedom. That's it. An album is not only the music, it's an old, it's an old story, it's an old concept, it's an old project. And we need to have a tactile, organic link with the music or with the artist we, we like. It's, it's funny because it's, a, it's like a, an attitude of an activist, I mean, to, to also to try to, to share with fans, to share with, uh, with the audience, something which is part of your, of your creative process, or to share also more than just the music.